Hey everyone, today we're going to talk to you about the seven worst mistakes people make when listing their home. Yes, it happens, <laughs> but we're not going to let it happen to you. That's right. Let's get into it. I'm Amber Moore and I'm Brett <laughs> whoa, whoa, I'm Brett Wallace there we go and we're your, your Houston, Houston local, local guide. guide actually but today we are gonna be your Houston listing Say guide. What? yeah a little play in the L there Brett okay let's okay, go we'll I love it, it to you so the biggest thing to note is yes Brett and I do sell homes this channel was predominantly built to you know help people relocate here from all over the world so we do help a lot of buyers but we also list quite a few homes, don't we, Brett? I think we do. Yeah, and a lot of times people are like, oh wow, you do that too? Hey, we're full service around here, people. So today we're talking about listings and the seven worst mistakes that you really can stumble upon. And we see it all, guys. We've heard horror stories. We've had clients share some things. So we wanna impart some knowledge. Hopefully that'll help you. Brett, what did you say? Whether you're selling an igloo, in a, what did you say? That's in a moment. First, we'd like to say thank you always for watching our channel and our videos. We love the likes. We love the subscriptions. We cannot thank you em enough. We're about to hit a thousand subscribers yes. very soon. So all the likes, all the subscribes, all the notification bells. Yeah. Thank so, you so much. So perfect segue. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Hit that little notification bell. We do release a new video every week. And also don't forget our email and our phone number are below. Please reach out to us anytime. We do answer calls and text messages pretty much in real time. Hey, if you call us right now, we might stop the video. I'm just saying we're that committed. Maybe yeah. not. Back to the teaser and the bonus that we're going to give you guys. Okay. <laughs> Amber was saying that I have something and Amber has something that we worked on and spent a lot of hours and got approved from our broker, which is not easy. Um, something we created for our listings. And I don't care whether you're selling an igloo in Alaska there you go. or a $15 million home in Palm Beach. This is not just for Houston. This is meant to assist sellers and listing agents in the selling of your home for the most stressful period probably of the wholesale process mm -hmm. other than getting it under contract That's right. i mean getting it listed but once you're under contract this is the most helpful resource and we will give it to you as a subscriber to this channel email us a request show us your subscriber um i'm sure she's checking on what emails are subscribing and which not so um this is for our youtube family and of course run it by your local um, brokers um and if they want to reach out and want it to me in word format i'll send it like hey run with this addendum that we created some people call it a notice, um, but it's meant to protect you during the option period and it saves a lot of time and headache. So without further ado, okay. let's get into the top seven mistakes, the biggest, the worst, the most tragic uh, mistakes people make when listing their home. So number one, um, I would have to say it's choosing the wrong realtor or real estate team. Um, and I say that because there's there's a lot of teams and a lot of real estate agents out there so it's kind of hard separating the noise from the the truth and obviously working by referral is obviously going to be right. best and also looking at their web presence google Very reviews important. mls down here it's har.com mm -hmm. um, mls reviews website presence google presence google is um very important um so what what do you th what do you think amber well about first of the right all agent? you're spot on brett but i think also, you should check out our reviews. Just we were saying, hey, that's something you should do. You can check out ours. We have nothing to hide. We're very transparent and upfront with all of our clients. And we're um, top producers in our office. So go ahead and do that. But absolutely. And and people that maybe want to <laughs> go to the website. <laughs> I, ca I cannot move right to left on the mirror thing with the video. And uh, <clears throat> I, I would say anyone that tries to shortcut important steps, you know, and there's a lot of things. So, for example, I got to break it out, Brett. Uh -oh. So we bring a binder to every listing appointment. This is chock full of amazing information, right? Our job is to mitigate risk. We're serious about what we do. We know what we're doing and we have a proven track record. So these are all kind of things, you know, a lot of times people actually interview realtors and I would encourage that, you know, because don't you, just- You talk to more than one mortgage officer when you're getting a loan. That's you right. Know? That's so right. definitely, we're not afraid. We always ask that, and I've even, I've even gone to some people and say, hey, 
I don't care how many people you talk to, let me go last. And if I'm not better than all of them combined, I'll give you a hundred dollar gift card to what? Amazon or whatever. Dang, Brett. Yeah, yeah. Confident. So, I like it. Yeah, people are like, this isn't even my house. This is a rental and they have me come over. Uh, but anyway, so back. <laughs> We're going to just give a snippet because we might have to delve deeper into this actual I so, one, I the so. specific video. But what I meant was when I alluded to when I said real estate team versus individual. So um, say I'm coming to visit you and I'm one agent. I'm not going to shuffle you off to a front office person right. or somebody that just handles phones or somebody that just handles this um, and has been in the business six months. With a lot of teams, that's what's going to happen. You, you interview with the big person, the big shot, and then you really don't hear or see much from them because they're in Cabo um, on a beach for, for the duration. That sounds good though. But what we're saying is you're stuck with us. Yeah. So, so when you do hire an individual, you, you're either going to hit it out of the park because that one person is your sentinel. Like they're your one person yeah. that's out there, you, you know, taking everything and doing everything and being a one man operation. So right. kind of all the, 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 all the glory and all the failure rest on the shoulder of one person. It's not if you're having brain surgery, you don't want seven people with scalpels. And like, oh, was, he, he cut the wrong thing. Not me. Um, but on the other flip side of it, I have some, I have some great experiences with great teams in our office. We have some killer, amazing teams. Um, so, so teams ran properly can be the best teams ran not properly can be the worst. Same thing as an individual agent. It's kind of what more fits your, um, what, what fits you. So maybe interview a team, maybe interview an individual. Um, but definitely their accolades and their performance is trackable online. That's right. So I'd always suggest that. A couple other funny things. We're going to say you might be choosing the wrong r realtor if, you know, you might be a redneck if. Um, but I would say you might be choosing the wrong real estate agent if they show up to your house and say they're doing your pictures, their pictures themselves of your home with their iPhone. That's a no. That, fire them on the spot and please tell me about it so I can clown them. I don't care. Right. Tell me who they are. Yeah, I don't care if they're in Houston or not. I'll blast them. Um, so that's one thing. You might be choosing the wrong realtor if they try to do their own pictures, even if it's with a DSLR camera. Hey, if they have a background in photography. Okay, thank you for fine, saying that. Fine, some fine, do. Some, some agents do. Good luck. Um, second, you might be choosing the wrong realtor if they use a combo lockbox instead of a Supra, which in our market, maybe some markets are different, but especially if you're living in the home at the time that that lockbox goes on the property, you need a super that logs every single deactivation and activation of the super. So when somebody gets the key, records the timestamp, records the license number, whether it's an appraiser, an inspector, or a real estate right. agent. And trust me, I've had doors left open at the property. The yeah. back, I've had sliding I doors left to. over, balconies, animals left out, um, let out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's kind of like, uh, I didn't do it. I, I, I'm i sure I locked the door. It's like, did you? But but yeah, this doesn't lie. It's uh, Bluetooth um, enabled. So, you know, you have to be a licensed agent, like you said, or someone licensed in the state of Texas here to access something like this. So we can track it down really quickly with a log. Right. And so, like I said, we're going to do a whole video just on this topic. Last thing, if you're having a difficult time getting a hold of an agent to begin with, yeah. to talk to them about listing your home or getting comps or kind of talking about their process or having them come for a meet and greet and, and kind of touring the property with you. If you're having a tough time communicating and it's not very fast and rapid to start with when the real estate agents, when the real estate agents trying to land your business, don't expect the communication to speed up once they have you under contract. And we're maniacal about real time communication. So Correct. that's what you can expect from us for sure. Okay. Number two, we're going to pick up. That was the longest one. I promise. Number two, um, historically the let's price the home higher. Right. So that we have more room to negotiate. Yeah. And in this market, because it is a seller's market, it's like, oh, we can just list it at anything. That's probably not the best strategy. And we'll tell you why. So, Brett, an example would be, you mentioned appraisal waivers earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if I'm pulling $200 a square foot is the absolute highest comp in your neighborhood for your area, yeah. five years older, five years newer, let's not price it 225 a square foot. Um, we might shoot ourselves in the foot. We might stumble out the gates and not get a contract. And again, this is 2022 when we're doing this video. Right. Um, if you get to double digit days on market or even, even luxury, even luxury above a million people, if you get to two weeks, three weeks on the market, people are like, what's wrong with this? Maybe that's Why the very first question. What's like, wrong? What yeah, happened? Did it I, fled during Harvey? Is it correct? Like, uh, I, I love this home until I found out it's been on the market 16 days. Now I'm wondering what's wrong. It's crazy. Um, so, and if you don't get multiple offers, you, you know, the chances of you getting an appraisal waiver, which means that the buyer saying, Hey, I'm offering you 210 a square foot for your home. And I don't care what the bank says, the third party appraiser says it's worth. Um, I'm going to bring 50, 100 grand extra to closing if it's short. 
the only time people are doing things like that is generally when they're trying to get, you know, one up the other buyer to get the actual property under contract. Right. So pricing it right, you know, pricing it at market value, um, pricing it to increase showings off the bat. Right. I'd rather have more showings and more people through the front door at a little bit lower price yep. than pricing it higher and looking for that one buyer a week, two weeks, a month, a month and a half Absolutely. later. And then God forbid you have to drop the price once, you just cut it's yourself like a death sentence. And it's like, like hey, if they'll cut once, they'll cut again. So yeah. number two, obviously not pricing it right out the gates. Worst mistake number two. Worst mistake number three, okay? Listing the home prior to it being showtime ready. <sighs> okay, Brett, let me and, take over. And I'm gonna let class. Amber talk about this. Okay, so people, they're like, what do we need to do to get the house show ready? Well, going back to this binder, we have a whole list of things you should and should not do. Now, one of those things does not involve spending a ton of money. But think about like the most important person in your life. You're like the person you idolize the most coming to your house. You would probably clean, right? You might actually clean blinds. You might actually get rid of that pet odor. You might, little things that really move the needle. You might spruce up the furniture, you know, put new fresh pillows out, all of those things. And we can talk about staging and all of that. And that doesn't necessarily need to happen on every listing, but you put your best foot forward, right? You only have one chance to make the best first impression. So if we start even just changing light bulbs, right? Simple things like that. Simple, simple, put some fresh mulch out in the front yard. I mean, don't have dead plants up there. You want to have great curb appeal, all of these things. I've gone to some homes and you're like, okay, we, we really have some work to do. And they're like, yeah, but we're just in a hurry. We're just in a hurry. No, take the extra few days. One week isn't going to hurt you. We really want to present the home in the best light possible. We only have one opportunity. When you do, I always say it right, short-term pain, long-term gain. You're going to move that price up. You're going to have competitive, probably multiple offers. Take the extra time. And then it's also going to be represented in the photos, which is what we do pretty much right after you get the home show ready. Yeah. And then we try to, once we do the photos, we try to release the home really quick exactly. the next day right so away. that you don't have to do it twice. Because you, like I said, photos are the most strict. Um, yes. Uh, real quick. When I started in 08, like people were still coming to the office to look at binders like that, like at listings, like the internet, I can't even imagine. obviously the, the internet, you know, people were looking online, but people were still coming to the actual brokerage and saying, Hey, what listings do you have? I'm like, you know, <laughs> but now, um, the, the computer, um, desktops and laptops have been superseded by. Yeah. The phone and people are on apps and all phones. these things. So right. more, more than 50% of home searches on HAR were done via cell phone. Right. So what, what are we doing? We're swiping left, swiping, right, swiping, 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 looking at pictures. Okay, people, the attention span and people are of people are going down, are going down, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so, so pictures are super important yes. and we usually do pictures and try to roll out the list the next day or two so you don't have to prep twice, okay? Um, and this kind of dovetails with number four, spending too much money. We don't want you spending too much That's money right. on things that don't matter and not spending enough money or time That's on right. the right things, which is kind of what Amber was speaking about a little bit, number three. So number four, talk to a good, 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 top-notch real estate agent or team, yes. right? About what to do and what not to do. Amber said, fresh mulch, I love it. 50, 100 bucks, get the teenager away from the computer, go give them 50 bucks. Yes, please. Yeah, give them 40 bucks, whatever, some lemonade, tell them to put some mulch out or get somebody else to do it. Moves the needle, very, very little, right? Okay, so on the extreme side, I was telling you, Brett, before this a video started, that I had a client that really didn't like the way their fence looked, and they were going to invest a lot of money, probably oh, yeah. twenty five hundred, three thousand dollars. Yep. Lumber's not cheap, and I looked at it and I was like, well, there's no gaps, there's no holes. I mean, it's standing up. It, could it be redone? Sure. Okay. I was like, I don't have a good feeling. I don't want you to spend the money on this. I am so glad I gave that advice because when the buyers came to write the contract and there were multiple offers. Nobody said one stinking word about that fence. There was something else that was a little bit more important that we had to take care of. But if we had already spent that money over there, right? And then over here, they would have been out a lot more money. So they walked away nutting a lot more than they would have. So again, we like to be on the ground with our clients. We walk the homes before we list uh, you know, properties and we give our advice. And we pretty much try to save you as much money as possible. You will never hear us go, yeah, fix this, do this, do that. I mean, within reason, right? We won't want you to spend more than probably couple hundred dollars, few hundred dollars. I had a client that did want to replace carpet because the whole house was bad, cost him 1500 bucks. If that, if that does go in with carpet padding and odor and- it, They had pets, it's yeah, very, exactly. It's very difficult. The padding yes. below, um, some of these newer ones have like a micro barrier or whatever, like a, like a vapor barrier, like a moisture barrier. But the older padding, man, if it's absorbing that dander and any kind of spills, it's very, it's very difficult to wet the top of the carpet, like with, with steam cleaning and all this stuff and make, 
you know, goes away for a couple of days. Anyway, um, that that is case by case basis, but of we course. definitely want to keep as much money in your pocket as possible. Yes. Um, so it's eyesore abatement is my opinion. So if there's, if you have flat paint, like builder grade paint and there's smudges on a wall, you're probably gonna have to paint that whole wall until you get to a right angle. Cause it's going to show people start painting squares around like electrical, or like, like yeah. uh, outlets and it keeps getting, the square keeps getting bigger. And like, <laughs> it's not going to go away. You got to paint the whole wall until you get to a break. Um, so, so eyesore abatement and an odor abatement. I agree. Very, very kind of people walk into, it's no wonder when you walk into Foley's, if people do that Foley's, still. Close, Dillard's. That. Okay. Okay. Dillard's. Bloomingdale's. I'm sorry. Or whatever. Nordstrom's. Let's really go Mer on out here. Mervin's. Okay. Rock. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's go. Rock. Yeah. Yeah. Rock. Okay. <laughs> So you walk in and usually it's perfume and cologne up front, right? So you want to, they want to tantalize the, yeah, see, I'm coming up with the senses, right? Um, oh, that's why a lot of people used to do uh, fresh baked cookies at open houses right. and, and lavender uh, sparks the buying. Um, I'm not a psychologist. I don't know, but you, you hear all these little tricks, but yes, um, the clean presentation is huge. Um, so that, that's something, but eyesore abatement for the most part, don't rip out cabinets, don't rip out countertops, don't put in 15, 20 grand. Because what you might like is not what the buyer might like. And then right? you got to praise for that extra money and try to get it back. Yeah, so it's, it's very just... subjective. And what I was going to say earlier is, even though they don't endorse us, but uh, the magic eraser, oh my God, that thing can cure everything. Like you just go around with the magic eraser and you could just take care of most of the house. It got the coffee stains out of my quartz. There you go. Yeah, after okay. I tried everything and the lady's like, um, my countertop person's like, hey, use, use the magic eraser. I was like, yeah, right. I did it and it worked. I was like, I was so happy. He's like, I don't spill coffee. I don't know what's in that. I don't want to know, but I just know it takes care of a lot of problems. I don't know. Okay, number five, and I'll let Amber take this one because this is her, um, that binder, as you can tell, this is kind of her expertise, but lack of organization and presentation, disclosures, maintenance records, receipts, work orders, upgrades, help us help you. We want to brag about things and we also want to let buyers and, and potential buyers right. know that we put thought and care into the way we put out the seller's disclosure notice. There is a section where it says yes, no, or unknown. And you're supposed to check each box. There's like 20 questions. I see sellers sometimes draw a line down the no, just one line and said, no, there's no problems here. Nothing to see here. It's like, oh, wow, you took a lot of time there. Um, All I have to say is amen, Brett. So we are maniacal about details, right? And our job is to mitigate your risk. And how do you mitigate risk? By being prepared, organized, and knowing what the heck you're doing, okay? And I cannot tell you how many agents have you know, been our partner on the other side of the transaction and they go, Oh my God, thank you guys so much. You're so organized. Everything is clearly disclosed. We understand, you know, again, we have nothing to hide. We want to be transparent. And you know, that's the first thing we never want to tell our clients to lie about anything. We have to be as truthful and honest as possible. Right? So we do have this binder. We go through all the forms. We do extra work up front with our clients so that we're not scrambling at the end. Again, short-term pain, long-term game. We do all the pre-planning and work up front. We hold your hand. This binder, uh, we have a corresponding email that goes out directly following our listing presentation and it contains everything. So no, you do not need to take notes the whole time we come to your house and we're going through all of this. We make this as easy as possible for our clients and everyone after we leave a meeting goes, oh my God, thank you. Everything you need to do is bam, 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 in order, very easy Spreads to understand. Te template spreadsheets for your upgrades, improvements, what we uh, love about our home. We have, yes. we have the template for everything. So once you get the email, you just save it to your desk. Gold mine, yeah, you save, save it to your desktop and you can start telling us all about the countertops and how much money you spent on the whole home generator and this, this, this. Because we want to brag about it. We want right. to boast about the most important dollar additions that you've made to your property. No one knows your property better than you. That's right. Okay. So that was number five. Number six. Good counting, Brett. I okay. I'm look, I'm bald for a reason. So <laughs> let me let me put this on my shoulders. Okay. Stressing out. That's number six. And this could be the most important thing to you as a seller and, and, and thinking about listing, stressing out. Okay. Let us do that. Let Amber do that. Let, let, let me do that. Okay. So you already have enough stuff going on. You're getting the kids transferred to another school. You're buying a home, you're building a home, you're moving changing to a different jobs. state, changing jobs, moving overseas. You're talking to the movers. You're trying to get, do I need two trucks, four trucks, three trucks? Um, you got a lot going on. Yeah. I mean, a ton of stuff going on. You're, you're, moving a lot of parts and pieces uh, on the chessboard. And, and and the last thing you need is to, it'd be nice to have somebody that you know is super, super capable out front running point for you. That's um, right. So this is what I like to do on Zoom calls. I'm literally going to take the stress from you and bring it over here to us. This is what I do. More on, no, okay. More on us. That's our job. We live and breathe real estate. We know what we're doing. 
Okay. We have processes in place for everything. And I feel like real estate is very linear, right? You get to a certain point. Okay. There's things in place. If something goes a certain way and then we, you know what I mean? You just do the next right thing next. That's our job to know what to do next. Okay. Not yours. You tell us your wants, needs, desires, goals, objectives. We take all that. We take what you give us and we run with it and we make everything completely turnkey for you. And then as the bonus item we're going to be sending to you, Yay. that is probably the number one yes. stress mitigator that I've come up with, that Amber's come up with in our time doing this. It is super, super valuable. Like I said, to our subscribers, we will give it to you. You can share it with your real estate agent. I don't care if you're in Timbuktu, Wisconsin, Albany, um, Albuquerque, anything that starts with an AL, doesn't matter. Um, California, New Mexico, it can work. It can be helpful. It will save you time during the option period. 99% of the time. And it just, um, we want to share that with you guys. I'm so proud of it. I want to make our industry better, to be honest, because this right. is, this is, I stress out over this with buyers agents more than anything in, in my career. And I just had enough of it last year. Um, well, so that's why go. we created it. So um, again, reach out to us. We'll send that to you, but you got to be a subscriber. Um, number seven, the, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even, uh, this, this should be a comedy. Um, this might work for certain people and in certain markets or land, but for God's sake, don't for sale by owner. That's right. Especially now you're leaving money on the table to save three points. Maybe that's, that's what you're saying in your mind is, Hey, I want to save 3%. I want to save 3%. But you're actually not saving it. Yeah. I mean, that's I, the whole if, point. If I could market it to the entire world in a professional manner versus people that just drive by and look at your Home Depot sign, don't get me wrong. There, if you have a corner lot and it's a commercial piece of property and you've sold 20, 30 properties and, and I have some clients that are, I'm going to be, I'm, I have a few clients that are sharper than me. I, I, I honestly do. They, no, there are some super, I'm not saying I'm the smartest, I'm the best realtor. There are some people out there that blow me away with their due diligence, with how prep, I mean, from there, um, usually it's corporate people and business But I would say for but, the most part, we do residential. I know you've done lease, uh, land deals for commercial, but for the most part with residential. Yeah, for instance, like in Needville, if you were yeah. living in a, if there are certain pockets where, yeah, um, if you in a real small part of town or everybody knows everybody and you put a sign and you might get 10 calls, but then you'll probably be calling me to ask if I can help with the paperwork. How do I write that it. contract? What do yeah, I need to yeah, do? But, What's this mean? In and, those situations, I'll tell people, hey, run with it yourself, you know, good. But 99% yeah. of the time, you need you need a real estate professional um to marketing your home for you and professionally managing for you it's not worth your sweat equity and you will no. you will you will net more in the end you will almost every time and i think the stat i don't know what the latest stat is was like 88 percent of people that listed for sale by owner and i could be wrong on this so please internet tell me i'm wrong um but i'll say hey it's just our market that's 88 I'll just make it up, but um, <laughs> it's like 85 or 90% of people end up listing with a professional real estate broker yes. after they've tried to for sale by owner, got burned multiple times and people fail to close and they don't know what to look for and what to listen for more importantly about the potential pitfalls of the buyer that you're about to get under contract with. That's the fastest I've spoken right. in a long time. Very good. I like it. So yes, our job is to mitigate your risk and to get you the most money possible for your home. And we take that seriously. I can pretty much guarantee you because I do open houses for every one of my listings. I don't care the price point. When I hear people talk, I work people against each I can guarantee you that I have gotten more money for every listing, by the way, I- She cut throat. <laughs> hey, I do anything for my clients within ethical boundaries, of course. Uh, but I, I know for certain that I've driven the price point up um, and worked deals against oh, me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean it, that's just what you do. And again, going back to how prepared we are, unless you know everything in here, unless you're a licensed agent, you are gonna leave money on the table. So I really appreciate you that you put this as number seven because it is definitely a concern that we have and we want you to, again to get the most money you can for your home so brett i think we got through the list pretty quickly yeah honestly it's a 23 minute video going on 24 but i'm telling you we could we could we could elaborate on each point we may do that in the for, yes. in, in future going in with with our series of houston listing guide i like the sound of we, this we, we may go forward with that a little bit and, d and delve a little deeper into each of the seven points but for the most part those are the seven worst mistakes that we see sellers yes. making um could be a little bit different in your neck of the woods but down here um that's that's our observation and again please email us and our email address is at the bottom okay. and in the description um to request the bonus material just say i'm a subscriber what are y'all talking about please send me the pdf and it's one page and we'll make it, it's generic and you can put your address on it. You can talk to your real estate agent, your real estate agent's broker, any attorneys in the area. I know things- We are not attorneys. We, yeah, but I, we did draw this up and we made it a little aggressive for our sellers. And I'm telling you, it is the number one value add that I've brought to any listing 
um, that I go to, and I usually slam dunk every listening appointment I go to yeah, based on do. this because it's not about the money. It's not a, it's it's it, there's so much that it's goes strategies. It's so much that goes on behind the scenes that you'll never ever see or know about what your agent is or isn't doing for you. Um, so don't get fooled. Yeah, well said, Brett. So we hope you've liked the video from today. Again, I like this Houston Listing Guide uh, special edition. This has been really fun. And as Brett mentioned, don't forget to get our info below. Email, call, text us anytime. Subscribe to our channel. And we can't wait to see you again here next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye.